Good afternoon. It is currently four o'clock on the Wild Wild West Coast in Sugar's World. I have to go to the Queerities tonight because Spice and I are nominated for favorite TikToker. So I need to get red carpet ready in under two hours. I figured today would be the perfect day to show you how to get a facelift with no plastic surgery. This is a masterclass for celebrity makeup techniques. So grab a snack, grab a coffee, and let's get glam with sugar. One size, secure the glow, as always. I am so excited for tonight because it's my first award show nominated for something. You don't understand, I don't win things, I don't get nominated for things. That's just not the kind of person I am, and maybe it's because I don't really make that my object of attention. I don't really care about accolades and titles because honestly, all that stuff is outside of me. I don't really think it's good to be chasing things that are outside of us. That's probably why I wasn't good at Drag Race because I know anything that's going to make me happy and is going to lift me up and empower me is inside, you know, how I feel. And I don't really feel like winning an award will make me happier. I feel like happiness is always going to come from me connecting to my inner being. So there's that, but it's still going to be fun to get glam and Jaden and Marley are coming over and my manager Sarah. So honestly, it's just going to be a fun night out. I don't care about winning. If we do, that would probably be hilarious because I don't even know what we would say. I'm just not a competitive person. It's never been my nature. I feel like we are all one and the same. We are all connected vibrational beings. So why do I need a title to make me feel of value or to feel that I'm better than someone else. I mean, don't get me wrong, it will be nice to win, but I'll be completely fine if we don't. I'm just happy that Spice and I are nominated for something like this. I know there's a few other girls from the Drag Race realm that are nominated for future all-stars and all of that. I will say it is nice to be nominated for favorite TikToker because it is confirmation that you know, our hard work did not go unnoticed. We went down the road less traveled of being a drag queen. And, you know, I'll pat ourselves on the back because I know no one else probably will, but we are trailblazers in a sense. No, we are. I mean, I will say that because what other drag queens that hadn't been on Drag Race? I mean, there was Plastique, but she was, you know, she already had established a name. We were nobodies. We had no connections. We were nothing. We were just two little boys on Long Island trying to make it, trying to make money to get out of our house and pay our student loans and make it to LA and eventually live on our own. Like that was literally our dream. So my dreams already came true. I'm living my dream, making these videos in my own place, connecting with you. So winning this would be nice, but I don't really care. I mean, life goes on and I'll be on my hot girl walk tomorrow and it won't even matter. So and I'll be back to making these videos because this is what I love. This is what makes me happy. So. so when it comes to celebrity makeup, especially looking good on a red carpet, you're going to want everything to be pulled back, right? So the first step is gluing down your brows. I feel like there's really no other way to go about it. You can try face tapes, which we will be doing at the end, but I think gluing down your brow and then drawing one on, or even if you wanna just glue down the end, that can work as well. But this is the way you're gonna get that super lifted, snatched look. So really go in with that glue, go up and down and all around. Make sure every hair is coated, okay? The messier, the better. Then I lick. You're gonna be a little puppy dog, and lick, 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 and then lay the brow hairs flat down to your face. Now, I've been gluing down my brows for almost five years, no, over five years now, doing drag, and I learned that this is a really good way to add liquid, or I guess juice, or some zest, not zest, no, it's just smoothing it out, because otherwise you'll feel it when you do it, the glue gets really dry. So then you're gonna go in with a spoolie. The one I use is just a random one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I find that the dirtier the spoolie gets, the more you do it, the better, because the glue in the product almost kind of wraps around it and it just makes it easier because your hair, I don't know, just, just trust the process. So what we're gonna be doing here is three layers of glue. We are only using the spoolie for the first layer. After this, it's just layers of glue. That was a big mistake in the beginning for me. I would spoolie it down, put glue, and then I would spoolie it again, and that's the rookie mistake because then you're lifting up all that glue and it's not gonna be smooth, it's not gonna be laid down, it's gonna be looking crunchy, unchy, unchy, and not cute. 
So you're literally gonna feel like your face moving with this, but that means it's working. You wanna lay this down in one step. This really simplifies the process because in the beginning, I thought you had to keep on spooling after each layer. It's like, no, only once. That's all you need. And this will get easier as you practice. And it really is not as scary as you think. When I first started drag, this like stressed me out so much. It took me so long. But once you start trusting yourself, then your makeup application is gonna be so much better. It really is a mental, spiritual thing, doing your makeup and making yourself look like a celebrity in this case. So you gotta trust yourself. If you feel like they're not coming out as good or if you're messing up, go back in with your puppy dog technique. Lick, 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 and then lay down again. And before this first layer dries, I just go back in with the glue stick and really make sure she's down in there. A good tip is to go on the side profile and then you'll see if the hairs are laying down flat on your face and then just go over again. It's a really simple process. I feel like a lot of drag queens or at least the makeup tutorials I was watching in the beginning, they overcomplicated it. It's like, no, it can be simple. Well, in Sugar's world, it's simple and easy. It's so easy and so fun. Oh my God, shoot me. While well, my first layer of brows dry, I'm going in with an eye cream. We're using the Kiehl's avocado cream. Use whatever you like. I gravitate towards this one because it is a thicker consistency. And we are going to moisturize under these eyes. This is going to make you look red carpet ready. All of the celebrity makeup artists that I follow, they do this and I have to agree with them that this really ups the makeup game, especially in person. Once that first layer of glue is dried down, probably wait a few minutes. You can use a blow dryer or a fan. Girl, get creative. I just wait and do something else like clean my makeup vanity. I don't know. It's your life. Your choice. Now we are going in with the second layer. It's so simple. Really pack her in. A good tip is to make sure that your Elmer's glue is not dried up. The darker purple, the better. I have one right here that's light purple. See the difference? And this isn't going to give you the best results. So make sure you're using one that's juicy and ripe and ready to go. And for this, literally just pack her on. Make sure you're kind of leaning your head back and going with the planes of your face. Because if you're just like going like this, then you're not getting the hairs right up here. So... Make sure everything is laid down. Then you're gonna do the other brow, wait another five minutes until they're completely dried down. Then you're gonna do your third layer and set watch. I'm excited for this little red carpet moment. I feel like after going to the Emmys and a few other events recently, the glamour of red carpets have kind of faded for me because you see it for what it really is. It's just a bunch of people waiting to get online and then some random photographer and I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's different for like movie stars and A-list celebrities because people actually know who they are. It's like me, I'm just like the influencer. It's like, who is that? They're like giving you the card. But it's not really what you think. It's giving very corporate. It's giving very, okay, next up and you, you're being carted around. So today I'm just gonna have fun with it. I don't care. Me and Spice are just gonna all waltz up and that's the energy today. It's chill, it's fun. I'm enjoying myself. I feel like in the past, any event I've had to go to, it just ends up being stressful. And I feel like it could be way more fun if I just relax and let loose, if you will. So in the name of Miss Lucy DeLuca, we are letting loose tonight. I'm probably gonna get a little, I'm kind of in like my little like shot era. Like I'll just have like a little shot or something and I'm just like fun and bubbly because otherwise I'm just like, I had to get the TikTok, I had to get the photo, I had to get this. Had to get. It's like, no girl, sit back, relax. You're nominated, you're being celebrated tonight and have fun. Now here's the life changing sugar hack that I feel like no one talks about. When you're doing your third and final layer of glue, pack her on and then you're instantly gonna go in with your white powder and set her. If you wait too long to apply the powder, then the glue is gonna dry down and in turn not stick to the glue. So take your puff. I recommend a little triangle one. I used to use a bigger puff, but I found a smaller puff. You can have more precision and it packs more to the glue. So I'm using Kim Chi's Puff Puff Pass. This is my tried and true. But you know, use whatever translucent powder that you have. Anything can work. I've just found this works the best for me. And now we are going to set and really press. Bam, bam, bam. And don't be afraid to really apply pressure, okay? Ooh, just like that. Okay. 
Yeah, it's literally that simple. Just make sure when you're setting that that brow is still wet. See, I didn't even wet my third layer on this side yet because I wanted to make sure this was sticking instantly. So then you go in with the glue for the other side and then repeat. So you get your white powder. Oh my gosh, I'm such a little teacher. I love it. I love being of help and of value. It just makes me so happy. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like as a human, it's not really my experience to live. I just need to uplift and support others. And I know that's very Miss America of me, but what can I say? It's my truth. You know, the more you connect with your inner being and the more love you feel for yourself, you kind of just want to give love to others. It's very fulfilling and satisfying. I mean, that's kind of a little fun thing I did the other day. I went out and it was given Flopville. I just, you know, when you have those nights and you're like, why am I doing this? Like this is, I'm trying to connect with people and talk to people at like the damn club and everyone's just trying to bump and grind. And I'm like, yeah, this is going nowhere for me. Like I need to, I want to talk to people. I want to connect and get to know them before I'm doing any of that. I went home and I was kind of in my head. I'm like, oh my God, am I like really different from these people? Like, why can I not connect in these spaces? Like all these other gays are able to do it. But then I did a little exercise. I'm like, you know what? How about I just connect with people right now, especially people that I normally wouldn't connect with. So I was just on my phone and that's when it's dangerous. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm just responding to people's stories. But no, it was very natural and organic. If I thought someone looked beautiful or they looked good, I said it and you know, they were showered with a little bit of sugar. <laughs> And you know, old me probably wouldn't have done that because it's like, oh my God, it's like, why are you messaging this person? Like they always pay you desk, like they don't deserve that. But I reversed it. I was like, you know what? What if I just send love and expect nothing in return? And that's what was lighting me up. It was so liberating to just give love and, you know, uplift others and not expect anything back. Because I think a lot of times we get afraid of rejection of like, oh my God, if I'm liking this person's story or giving them attention and they don't give that back to me, that's embarrassing. But no, why would it be embarrassing to spread kindness and warmth? I don't think that's embarrassing. I mean, there were there was like one guy that just like, I wrote something really sweet and he just had seen it and didn't respond. And I was like, Ooh. but I didn't care. I was like, whatever, girl, hopefully um, that made you happy. Like, damn, okay, like tough crowd. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, but you just gotta be you and spread love, baby. I'm so happy I'm finally doing my long awaited brow cover tutorial. I feel like I have been talking about this since January when I really started up my Sugar Gets Glam videos. I'm like, it's coming, it's coming. And the day is finally here. See, so you ask and you shall receive. Before I start drawing on the new eyebrow above this one, I actually just go in with my foundation. This is just my little routine because I kind of go over this and I feel like if I did this after I drew on the brows, it would just be way harder. Right? This is just the easier way. This is what works for me. Using my MAC Full Coverage Foundation, as always. I'm scared to use other ones. I'm gonna be doing way more uh, unsugar-coated makeup reviews on this channel this week. So I will be trying new makeup. So you have that to look forward to. I'm just wondering if anything is gonna beat out this foundation because, well, you know, I did try the Makeup Forever Hydra Glow and I liked it. It's funny because the next day they had literally sent me more shades and I was, oh, oh my God, I could have used this yesterday and I could have saved money by not buying it. But hey, I like buying it because I feel like it's different when you buy your own makeup. It's just you appreciate it more and also you have higher standards because you're like, I bought this. When something just given to you, maybe you don't respect it as much respecting makeup but no it's just like getting a gift and buying it yourself you're probably gonna appreciate a car that you bought yourself compared to it being given life lessons with sugar <laughs> now when it comes to actually drawing on your new eyebrow above the one you just glued down i'm going in with the morphe dip brow what do we call her biscotti there's so many good dip brows on the market now i remember when anastasia beverly hills kind of were the only ones that had a pomade style of product. So it's nice that there are affordable options for the girls that don't want to spend $30. So that makes me happy when it comes to the makeup world. When it comes to the shape of your brow, I would suggest 
playing around with it because you're not going to know what looks good on you until you do it. And it's almost like you need to fully commit to that shape and then you can look back at pictures and, and days later you can reassess if you actually like that shape and go from there. I would recommend doing your brows, taking a picture, and then editing it to how you like it and then do that the next time you do your brows. That's been a game changer for me. But also makeup is fun. So experiment, have fun. It's not that serious. If you don't like the brow shape you did, then try again next time. Try something different. Doing your eyebrows is just like anything else in life. You don't know what you want until you experience what you don't want. So if you hate your brows, redo them again tomorrow completely different also what really helps me is observing other people's eyebrows so now when you look at other people's makeup have that eye in the back of your head well i guess your eyes are in the front of your head or just you know make it a point to observe other people's eyebrows and see what you like on them what you don't that way you're going to be able to curate the perfect brow for yourself don't go too heavy-handed with the product especially in the front I really feather her in. I used to make the mistake of taking the dip brow and then going right into the front. And that is a rookie mistake because no matter what you do, if you're using a pomade, it's just gonna look thick and clumpy and not cute. So I always say do less in the beginning and then, well, you're gonna see, but I actually use a pen. We'll just keep watching. Once the pomade is applied to both brows, we're gonna go in with cleaning up the bottom. I use my handy dandy Tarte Shape Tape. This is the best full coverage concealer on the market for me. I'm looking for more. I want to see if I can find a dupe for her or if another concealer beats her out. So let me know your recommendations down below. So what we're going to do is we are going to carve out the bottom of this brow. I tend to not carve out the top. I feel like it's unnecessary as long as you are applying the pomade evenly and just make sure the top part of the brow are you know in line with each other and parallel then you're good to go with that so that will save you a lot of time look how easy this is one little wipe boop 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 and you're done now so it doesn't really matter how you apply this for my first swipe i just like to really cover up the majority of my actual eyebrow and then i go in with a precision brush you could do the whole thing with this and i do sometimes but I feel like if you want to get really detail oriented and carve out the shape you want, go in with a brush and how thin or thick you want to go is up to you. It's personal preference and you're going to find what works for you. Actually, I lied. I am going to be carving out the top just a little bit. So it's all about going back and forth on the top of the brow and the bottom to get your desired shape. This will allow you just to have more precision when it comes to creating the shape you want. We're trying to look like we have a facelift here, so definitely go for the more lifted, arched look. That will definitely give you the result you want if the plastic surgery look is, you know, what you're going for. So we are just carving out that top, and then, you know, whatever you do on this side, match her up on the other. You don't want two uneven brows. When it comes to lifting up your face, you're going to want to be very strategic with your concealer placement. I believe a little bit goes a long way, especially with this concealer. It's so full coverage. You only need a little dot. Bam, bam, and a little bit on the chin. Now, when we blend, we're really going to be focusing on that inner corner tear duct because we want all the lightness right here. And then we are going to blend upwards to really lift up that cheekbone. I would recommend getting a concealer shade that's one or two shades lighter than your foundation to have that brightening, lifting effect. You know, this is not clean girl makeup, okay? We are transforming here. This is drag, baby. I used to apply way too much concealer and I was giving Cakeville because I was watching all these tutorials of these drag queens and then I was like, wait a minute, let me just be a self-taught diva and do it myself and figure out what works best for me and then that's when everything changed. So you don't have to highlight above your lip but I'm a man and I got a five o'clock shadow so I have to. If you're a woman, you don't really have to do this. But if you need extra coverage, then this step will be great. You never want the mustache look. It's just, it's just not cute on anyone, I don't think. So when it comes to setting the face and getting that airbrush look in person and in photos, a really good hack that I've been doing recently is I will take my powder, I get it all up in there, and then I roll it out on my hand 
to get any excess off and it also makes all the powder on the puff smooth because if you have clumps on the puff and then you apply that right to your face it's going to look just how it did on the sponge and we don't need clumps and then it's going to stuck no so i you know really get it off it's honestly going to feel like there's no powder and then you lightly set boom honestly you do not need a lot i used to think you need so much and especially we're going to be baking later so that will act as another layer of powder so really rub it off or roll it off right and then lightly do 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 underneath the eye bam look at that and i love the little triangle sponge because it allows you to get right up into that inner corner where we need the most brightness now you're going to do the same thing for setting the eyebrows and we are going to lightly press over these bad boys. And once this step is done, I feel like I can really move on with my makeup because it's like, okay, the brows aren't going anywhere. That would be my nightmare not setting these brows because one little inch of sweat, one gust of wind, and they're flying right off. Well, I guess they're not flying off because they're not actual hairs. It's literally drawn on brows. Oh my God. I remember I used to associate drawn on brows with just not really the best appearance because my nurse in elementary school, she fully had tattooed on eyebrows and they turned like green and blue. It was not cute. You know what? She needed Sugar's brow cover tutorial. That's what she needed. So hopefully she's watching. <laughs> what was her name? Oh my God. What was her name? She was an iconic nurse. I felt like I didn't spend a lot of time in the nurse's office. I wasn't the girl that, you know, every second was like, oh, I got to go to the nurse, like, you know, just to get out of class. But I did go. I was a good supporter friend. So if like someone had a guy, like, let me come with you. There's that. So literally don't be afraid. Set right over that bad boy. And don't go fast with this. I feel like a lot of people will just boop, boop, boop. And then you're, you know, you're going to be lifting up the products underneath. So it's not set yet. That's why we're setting it. So you got to be careful. Once it's set, then, you know, you can blend away and, you know, be careless, but be intentional. We don't want, I always say we don't want our makeup to be a fluke, like, oh, it just randomly turned out good. We want to know that every time we do our makeup, it's going to be a sleigh because we know what we're doing. Now to contour our face and give us a chiseled look, I'm using the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. She's my tried and true at the moment. This is all about focusing the darker shades on the outer perimeters of your face. Don't get carried away. I used to apply too much contour and then it just ends up looking heavy and it looks like you're wearing a lot of makeup. And I know that's rich coming from a drag queen. It, like, isn't that the point? Like looking like you wearing makeup? Yes, but when it comes to the skin, we definitely want it to be soft. I like to put all of the drama and attention on my eyes. I mean, why have so much attention on a, like a heavy contour? It just, it's honestly gonna make you look older. Now this is game changing. I got an angle brush. She is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. She's A18. She's an amazing brush. And this is gonna act as your light bow, baby. So carve out that jawline. What I do is I just draw a line. I used to do so much and then it was just no. So honestly, just draw a line. It feels weird, but it's gonna make you look more snatched, especially in photos. I mean, blend out a little bit, but don't be afraid to cut. I like to think of makeup as Photoshop. Like imagine you were literally taking a paintbrush and just like carving out your jawline, but instead you're doing it with makeup. So powerful. But this will really give you that chiseled look, give you some definition. And now you don't need a facelift. My face is really sensitive to sodium. So if you had Chinese food last night or, you know, went to town on something really greasy, you're feeling a little bloated oated and you don't have those little guava things that people use or whatever the hell that is it's going viral on TikTok. People are massaging their faces. Just contour. It's all the trick in the book, baby. Now, the main concern for your face is your nose and you really want a nose job and you're trying to transform it with makeup. I'm going to be honest, no amount of contouring and highlight is going to change the actual bones of your nose. You could spend all this time really finessing your nose makeup and then you turn to the side, do, 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 and then we see what the actual shape is. I think it's a waste of time. So just lightly shadow and highlight. I literally just go in with uh, the powder foundation that I used earlier. And we are going to lightly contour the nose. I would change the way you think about your nose contour. Instead of contouring it, think about it as shading it in. It's a mindset switch and it's really going to up your nose contour game. If you go too dark and too heavy with the contour, 
it's just going to end up bringing more attention to it, which we don't need. Also, I know a lot of people will go in with like a gray or ashy brown to do the nose, and I wouldn't recommend that. I would just go in with a warmer shade. N you know, not too warm. You don't want an orange streak, but just make it match with your powder foundation. And this will just be so much more natural and effortless. You know, we don't want to bring attention to the nose, but we, we want to give it definition. So. so blend her out. I really focus on the bottom of my nose, but this is going to be different for everyone's nose shape. I would recommend just really analyzing your features and whatever you don't like or whatever you want to change, focus the product on that problem area. Finally, my favorite part, eyeshadow time. I feel like this is where we really can get in there and snatch up that face. It's all in the eye. I'm gonna go back into my Kimchi Puff Puff Pass powder and the same thing, we are going to lightly bake underneath the eye. This will make sure you get no fallout. And then we also snatch up the nose, boom, just like that. The two in one step, baby. So for eyes, I'm starting with an orange transition shade and we are going to take a big fluffy brush and start packing her in. My outfit has some orange and pinks and actually some greens. So I like to incorporate that all into my eye looks. I remember watching a movie when I was younger and there was like some celebrity stylist gay and he was like, that is a sin to match your eyeshadow to your dress. And in Sugar's World, I said, always match your eyeshadow to your outfit. It just gives you way more of a doll-like appearance. Because think about it, dolls always were super matchy-matchy and they were very on theme and it was a fully realized look. Wow, that blended out so gorgeously. So we're packing on this orange. Okay, I kind of need to rush because I'm actually going to an event. I, this isn't like a fake like uh, TikToker, like I have to be there for 15 minutes. Like, no, I actually have to go. So off camera, I'm going to apply the pink and we'll be back. When it comes to having a super lifted eye area, I like to go in with a super pigmented white. This is from the Space Norvina palette ABH. We love her. We're gonna get the center highest point of that brow and place a little bit of white right at the top to lift her. See the difference? And then you go back in with that orange and marry them together. Now we're gonna draw on a lid with a white concealer. So for the shape today, I am gonna be going a little bit more circular. I have a green glitter I'm gonna be placing on top of her and I really want her to be seen and for her to pop. If you do your lid too small, then it's almost pointless spending so much time, you know, doing glitter and all of that because you won't even see it. So, you know, this is all about going back and forth, tilt your head back and forward and see where you want that lid to hit. And this will get easier the more and more you do this. If you're blessed and have naturally big lids, then you don't need to do this step. But if you're a hooded eye girly like me, then drawn on that cut crease is gonna be your best friend. For the glitter on my lid today, I'm using ABH Loose Glitter in the shade, what is she called? Color Wave, it's just so gorgeous and olive. I am going in with my tried and true Stila right now. She's in the shade Perlina. And I apply this to this white cut crease to act as a base for this glitter because, well, I actually do have a NYX glitter glue that's great, but for some reason I find this easier to apply. So we're gonna tap, tap, tap into that lid. It's so easy, y'all. Makeup is not hard. If you think it's hard, it's all in your head, trust me. I used to think that too, but we gotta get rid of those old stories we tell ourselves. If you're nervous about makeup, don't be. It's fun. Okay. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, wow, look at that. Are you kidding me? Can you see that? Look at how pretty this green is. Now to add some definition to the lid, I'm gonna be going in with a kind of cranberry warmer shade. You could use black, but this will just tie in with the colors I'm using for this look. I'm taking a tiny little brush. Can y'all see that? We are going to draw her on. Look at that. Oh, I love this brush. And this is really going to give you an illusion of being snatched and pulled because, you know, it's adding definition to the eye and it just looks gorgeous. That's all you need to know. You know, sometimes there's not a reason for it. It's just, it's gorgeous. For eyeliner, I'm using the One Size Point Made. She's my tried and true. Use whatever liner you're comfortable with. It's more about the placement. So to get that snatch effect, we are going to find the end of our actual eye and the end of our new eyebrow. And we are going to boop, boop, boop. We are going to follow that. 
If you go too up, it's gonna cut off your face. If you go too low, it's gonna bring it down. It's like filling in point A to B. Can I do it in one swipe? Bam, just like that. Now the hard part is, well actually it's not hard. It's only hard if you tell yourself it's hard. And then we are going to match it up to the other side. Okay, so don't worry about it being too even because we are gonna be smoking it out after with black eyeshadow. And then we are going to basically fill in this line to where the center of your actual eye starts. This is gonna be different for everyone's eye shape. My, my eyes are more circular and go downwards. So I have to connect it to that top part of my eye and then we're gonna fill in. I would also recommend going in on the inner corner. This will make your eyes more pointed and slanted and in turn give you more of an upturned look. Another tip is look at where this is ending and where you drew the line on your lid and just like kind of tilt your head up and then connect because this is what it will look like really, you know, when you're looking forward. Because if you do all of your eyeliner work with your head tilted back, it's not gonna be as effective as you would like because when you look up, it's gonna disappear. So keep on going back and forth. Drawing in the inner corner liner is really gonna give you more of a cat-like appearance and in turn, make you look sexy and gorge and pulled. So don't be afraid to get in on that inner tear duct and go to town. You're gonna find out what shape looks good for you. But if you're struggling, honestly, just screenshot my liner placement and apply it on yours and you'll be good to go. Okay, voiceover time because Miss Sugar was running behind. Next, I'm adding a black eyeshadow and smoking out that liner. This is gonna diffuse that line and make your eyes look way bigger. I always think it's a missed opportunity when people don't do any shadow work on your lower lash line. From far away, this is gonna make the dimensions of your face look way better, especially if you're a man like me. From far away, way it's just going to open up that eye and the goal here is to make your eyes look as big as possible now the game changing sugar hack here is to go back into your eyebrows and start up that detail work i use the nyx lift and snatch pen to draw on those brow hairs then you're going to want to highlight your nose since we didn't do such a strong contour highlighting is really going to be the moment for you and of course we need to overline those lips i'm using mac boldly bear like i was saying earlier applying makeup is a mental thing so if you get into your head that i'm not changing my features i'm just emphasizing what i already have and elevating myself to a level where when i walk into the room it's like bam i am here that is what is ultimately going to help your makeup application because if you have it in your head oh my god i hate my nose i hate my lips let me change this it's gonna read you need to rock what you got. There was a girl at my high school and she gave me that advice. I was like, girl, how do you have so much confidence? And she was like, baby, you just gotta rock what you got. And honestly, she didn't lie. Now we are doing my trick of snatching up that face. I don't even use face tapes. I actually just use two really tight wig caps. I know a lot of celebrities and drag queens use the face tape method, but honestly, that is not good for your skin to be pulling on it every day. You're honestly just causing yourself premature aging, which we do not want. Now I'm going in with my blush and cleaning it up with a little bit of bake. This is the game changer for me. Also, this highlight from Wet n Wild is the Marilyn Monroe Cool Champagne one. This had me looking like my cheeks were liquid gold. And then we need to set. I was bathing myself in the kimchi uh, setting spray because because baby girl, this was not going to be going nowhere on the right carpet. There were going to be judgy drag queens here that uh, do not like me and Miss Spice. So we needed to be flawless and unclockable. And that we were. Oh my gosh, there were some interactions with some shady drag queens that I'm honestly proud of myself because I didn't allow myself to get down to their lower frequency. And I was just a positive poly. So thank God. Here we have Jaden and Marley snatching up my headband for me. If you want a facelift, wear this headband and a wig and it will pull you back for days. Okay, we made it to the Queerties. We sell it. Oh, I can't. At the seven repeat. Turn it the other way. That way. <laughs> Waiting online. Waiting online to take our pictures. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm just getting back from the Queerties. That was so hateful. I didn't have time to film a little ending clip. I was literally being rushed out. We had Sarah, our manager here. Oh my God, can I film? I just did a little... Oop. I just did a little... Oop. Miss Orion's story, she's an iconic drag queen. She just gave me a little whoop uh, as I was leaving the queerities. So I'm gonna do a little recap now. I just tried touching up my makeup. It, oh my gosh, okay. 
She's in her own little world. It's a little crooked, but it's fine. My dress is falling apart. So just pretend I looked way better like five hours ago before I was sweating in the back of a theater in Hollywood. I ended up having such an amazing night. Oh my God, I should have started the clip. Spice and I won the Queerity for favorite TikToker. We were not expecting it at all. Like literally roll back to earlier in the day. I was like, I don't think we're gonna get it. And lo and behold, we do. On the way there, Jamie and Marley were like, oh my God, do you guys know what you're gonna say if you win? Ooh, let me show y'all the boot. The boot was everything. My Sugar's World house is a mess right now. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, look at that. High wig stands. We'll pretend she's spice. Crossing the legs of a tuck, God bless. It ended up being such an amazing night. Right when we walked in, we saw Shangela. And if y'all don't know, I feel like I haven't talked about this, but Shangela's literally Spice and I's like favorite drag queen. She was supportive of us back in 2019 when we first started drag. We met her at a gig and well, she was doing a gig, not us, God bless, at Atlantic City with all these gays. And she just ate us up in the best way. And she really uplifted us. And she was, you know, always messaging us, especially in the beginning, way before Draggers. We had just started and, you know, we were making our way onto TikTok and Shangela was always very supportive. And it was so nice to see her, especially the night we win this award for favorite TikToker because she was there in the beginning supporting us. Well, a lot of drag queens wouldn't. So, Shangela, thank you. She's probably not watching this. She's living her best, but she is such a ray of sunshine. Spice and I definitely have to do her makeup and turn her out because in my mind, she's my drag mom. And, you know, I've raved about her for years. You go, oh, who else did we see? We saw oh, Lucy, we saw Selena and Frankie Grande. We had amazing conversations with them. It was just a key. I got my little drink. Well, no, uh, Sarah was coming over with the drink. And then all of a sudden, they announced favorite TikToker, drum roll please, sure and spice. Here is our acceptance speech, God bless. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I think all we really have to say is don't wait to be chosen. Years ago, when we were on Long Island, in the suburbs, in our house, literally hiding from our family, doing drag, we chose ourselves. No one's gonna show up at your door. This might be Mr. Mark. No one's gonna show up at your door and give you your dream career, your dream job, your dream man. Go out there and do it for yourself. We were literally just the two random gay boys in the suburbs and we created magic in our childhood bedroom. Go out there and don't wait, okay? Do it for yourself, baby. Oh wow, oh my god. Yeah, honestly, I'm just happy to be an example for any gay person, any queer person, any straight person, whoever. You don't have to wait for a platform. You can create your own platform. We have the internet at our fingertips. TikTok. Get on the internet. Start making videos. You can change your life. Honestly, I blacked out when I went on the stage because I really was not expecting that. So hopefully I made sense. I mean, I feel like my acceptance speech is this video. I was talking about it earlier that I'm just happy I get to live my dream every day and create art and be a drag queen. When I started drag, my biggest goal was for people to just view me as my true artist self, as a drag queen. It almost doesn't feel real. It's it was, you know, we were mocked. Spice and I, we were, we were hated on. Like, uh, there were people in our lot, like, no one wanted us to do drag. Our family, the people on lot, it was just, we, it was really an uphill battle. But the amazing thing is, it doesn't have to be an uphill battle anymore. We are coasting downstream, baby. We are in our creative vortex. We are going 100 miles per hour and nothing can stop us. And I hope that can be the same for you. If you feel roadblocks right now, if you feel like there is so much in your way until you can finally be happy, right now is your message from the universe. I'll deliver it to you personally. It's not real. It's all in your head. It's all in your mind. Suffering is all in our mind. So if we can get out of our mind and into our hearts and you're golden. Okay. I need to tap out of profit sugar mode, but thank you guys so much for watching. Spice has the queerity. I'm probably going to meet up with her tomorrow. Maybe I'll vlog at Denny's really quick. I think we're going to get Denny's and all that. Okay. Bye. I'm going to go shave my grandma's back.